this, and we're going to minimize this, Boom. and here we are, I hope, I hope we're in business here, I don't see my, my, my movement, yeah, I'm moving, okay, <laughs> good morning one and all, welcome to mid Cape morning Bible study here at uh, the church, so happy you could join us. Uh, we are. We think we are working through these technical difficulties. Pastor Matt is not doing well. Uh, he is. Uh, he. Um, I don't know how much he wants me to say about this. So I, I just want to say that this is the third day now. This is very much unlike him to miss three Bible studies in a row. So yeah, never. There was a time to pray. He's this never. Is it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's important. So we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to, to meet on your word, to study it, to uh, and get it incorporated into our lives that we might live better lives uh, for your glory. Uh, but we have special uh, requests for Pastor Matt's healing. Uh, Lord, let your healing touch reach him. Help him to get through this situation. You know what's best. You know what, uh, what we're all going through, what we uh, have to go through. Uh, the Bible study that we're going to look into your word today says that, uh, you know, suffering is part of this walk with the Lord. And uh, Pastor is going through it right now. If ever was the time, please hold him up in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And with that, we're going to continue our study. We're in Acts. Uh, Actually, we got through yeah. only 13, right? Yeah, we're at 14. We finished 13, so we're going to be getting Acts 14, which is very much a continuation of Acts 13. It's part of Paul's missionary journey. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about the next phase of it here. Uh, now, see, oh, there you are. If I move, yeah. there you uh, are. Okay, so it's, because of the, it's because of the green screen. <laughs> okay. And I really, yeah. Pastor Matt likes the green screen. Yeah. Me personally, it don't matter. Yeah. Well, I don't mind being upstairs. It allows you to get that background. That's the thing. But now yeah. it's got the tool was flickering on and off here. Yeah. I hope that's not too annoying. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. <laughs> okay. Well, here am I, and here's Acts 14. Uh, we're in the New Living Translation, uh, continuing Paul's journey. Now this is, uh, do I have a map here? Is that map still yeah. here? Uh, which map did we use before? We used the second one, that one. This one? Yep. Okay, will that get any bigger? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so moving from uh, Sidonac, Antioch, across Galatia into Iconium. These are words that are going to be coming up in the text, so we're just pointing this up to you. Yeah. So he's still on the outbound path, Yeah. okay? And he finally gets to Derby, and they turn around and backtrack, okay? So that's, that's what we need to keep in mind. Uh, so again, Acts 14, NLT, verse 1. The same thing happened to <laughs> happened in Iconium, okay? This is Paul meeting with, uh, making his first stop at wherever the Jews were meeting, if they had a synagogue, that's where he went first. Sometimes they didn't. Uh, but this was his MO. We talked about this, his modus operandi, what he, his methodology was to go to, the, go to where the Jews were and give the message there first. Gentiles joined in, and then the, the uh, emphasis went more and more toward the Gentiles in these meetings. Um, so here we are in Iconium, same thing happened again. Okay. Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogue and preached with such power that a great number of both Jews and Greeks, i.e. Gentiles, became believers. Preached with such power, okay? And again, we saw the methodology of what did he preach? He preached the history of the Jews to show that we're all on the same page. We're all brothers here. These guys are coming to strangers from out of town, but they're Jews. They claim to be Jews. They meet up with the Jews in the, in, that are locally in their synagogue, and he starts with a history of the Jews to say, look, we're on the same page. We, you know, we have this common uh, lineage, this common history. Um, we're brothers as far as Jews go, but we're further brothers than that, which is what he's really going to disclose. 
We're, we, can, we can be brothers in Christ, the ultimate Jew. Uh, and th this is what his story is about. But this was his starting point in his, uh, uh, his effort, efforts to evangelize. Yeah. He so, preaches salvation pretty much. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's the way he brings it. Right. It's, yeah. it's in a way that they understand it. Right. And they can receive it. Exactly. It's, he knows his audience. He knows who he's talking to. He's this offensive. really may not be relevant to us if we're not Jews or we don't protect, uh, uh, and plan on uh, interfacing with uh, the non-believing Jews. This method is something we can learn from, but it's not something we're going to apply directly because different environment. For us, we're, we're talking about people who may already have a working knowledge of who Jesus is, yeah. um, but that really haven't, uh, really haven't incorporated the spirit, uh, really haven't become born again, per se. Yeah. Uh, so we, we may be on an entirely different journey from Paul. Uh, but this, but again, this is history. We're getting a, a perspective of how Paul went about it and why, and he was effective. That's that's the big thing. Yeah, he's effective with both the Jews and the Greeks. And by the way, when in this context, Greeks are Gentiles, but they're believed to be because he, uh, they're Greeks that were in the synagogue. They're believed to be converted Jews. Yeah. Okay. This is we're trying to make some distinctions here. Yeah. Uh, uh, they in the next, next verse, we come up with some of the Jews, however, spurned God's message. So we've got really, who do we? Who is he talking to? He's talking to Jews who were born Jewish and grew up Jewish. They're talking to Greek Jews, in other words, people who converted to Judaism who were once Gentiles. And then we've got non-believing Jews, Jews who are not accepting Paul's message. Yeah. So the, these, this is his audience. These are the people he's talking to. You were going to say? I mean, they they pretty much all understood what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, he was effective. I mean, you have people, believers yeah. coming oh, yeah. in great numbers. That's, that's yeah. evidence of fruitfulness. Yeah. So verse 2. We're in Acts 14, 2, NLT. Some of the Jews, however, spurned God's message and poisoned the minds of the Gentiles against Paul and Barnabas. Okay, always that resistance from the non-believing Jews, or the non-accepting Jews. Yeah. Those that stick with the uh, the old Jewish traditions, because that's their power structure, too. Jealousy. You've got, you've got to realize, that's, that, that's, you know, that's their status structure. Yeah. And so you're yeah. rocking that boat, uh, you know, you're really picking a fight. They were just, they were jealous, and, and you know, just like Jesus, yeah. you know, they wanted the attention to be focused on themselves. Right. There it is. There it is. So verse 3, the apostles stayed there a long time. Now this is interesting. They're meeting this resistance by the non-believing Jews. Nonetheless, they stayed there uh, in um, Iconium a long time. Uh, kind of interesting. Usually when, you, when we meet opposition... We say, okay, you don't want to hear it, we're out of here. Yeah. But yeah, no, they stuck different. around because they, there was fruitfulness there too, yeah. among the Jew, among, among some of the Jews and the uh, Gentile Jews, the the uh, Greeks, yeah. so to speak, that yeah. converted. So if you're fruitful, and you know you make an inroads, uh, you know you got to ground the message. You know, it's yeah. one thing to get people to believe it. Um, but when they're telling you, come back next week and it, preach the same thing again as they did in the previous chapter, you know God, you've got something going. If God tells you to stay, you stay. You stay. If he tells you to say, you say. There you go. If he tells you to shut up, he, you shut up. <laughs> if he tells you to leave, you leave. There you go. But, That's it. You know. That's they, it. Trying to be they, responsible they, they, yeah, in all things. They were conscious of the Holy Spirit. Yep. Um, they were constantly in prayer and in the word and they they were directed i believe to stay there in the fruitfulness yep. one way or another they stayed and did yep. what they had to do a lot of us would have faced opposition and just ran yeah oh you don't want to hear it boom we're out of here i can't wait <laughs> to get out of here yeah. <laughs> okay so the rest of verse 3, apostles stayed there a long time preaching boldly. This is a word we got to call and talk about here. A 
about the grace of the Lord, and the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miraculous signs and wonders. Yeah. Okay, that's the confirmation. Yeah. But this word them. boldly has come up several times. I think we need to talk about this. Boldly doesn't necessarily mean loudly. No. Boldly does not necessarily mean you're going out to pick a fight. You don't have to do that. The word is going to create uh, a... Um, well, I, you can see it here. It's creating some resistance among some people and acceptance among others. So that's going to happen. But boldly, to me, just means stick to the fundamentals of the faith. Rich, I have a I have a T-shirt. It says, "I'm not arguing. You, I'm not arguing. I'm just explaining why I'm right." Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so. But I think of boldly meaning uh, stick with the stick with the with the fu the fundamental tenets yeah. of the flight of the faith, namely, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus yeah. is the God Man, conceived of the Holy Spirit, in the Virgin Mary, God and Man getting together, a unique character in all of history. He had to be this because his primary mission was to atone for the sins of men and rectify the relationship between God and man. Yeah. The Old Testament, Leviticus says, for sin comes death. The payment for sin, therefore, has to be the shedding of blood. And without the remission of, uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's why Jesus had to take on this identity. He had to be God to have the authority to forgive sin. He had to have the blood of a man to be able to have the currency to pay the sin debt. And that's why that's a very important fundamental. The others are, he did die for the sins of men. He did get buried and he resurrected. And that's the crown and glory, of course. That's the seal of approval of God the Father himself for Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus' sacrifice was accepted. Therefore, we can trust in him for the forgiveness of sins. That's that's the fundamental. That you don't compromise. Yeah. That's where, that it's, it's speaking, you can whisper it and be bold about this if you've got those truths going for you. Yeah, and boldly you, 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 you're speaking on the truth. It's, it's easy to say that a rock is hard when you have the rock yeah. in your hand and you can tap it on the ground. Right. They, they, I mean, the prophecies, as we've discussed earlier, I believe in the earlier chapter, about the prophecies, I mean, them coming true, the astronomical chances, I mean, you can boldly say that. You no. can, I mean, you can stand on who Jesus Christ is. You can boldly preach the gospel. And... I, I, you're right. I mean, preaching boldly, it, it's something you do, and he's doing it about the grace of the Lord. Amen. And there you go. He proved yep. it. He gave him power to do miraculous signs and wonders. Yeah. I mean, right there, it just proves yep. what they're saying to be true. I yep. mean, just like Jesus Christ. Yep. I mean, that's the miraculous signs and wonders. Yes, they are blessings in and of themselves yeah. to get a healing, uh, to get some other need provided for. But they are they are confirmation that these the, the people who, pro who provide the signs had the right word, had the right message, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, that, that's the function of them really yeah. to confirm the message that it's it is true. the truth. There it is. On to verse 4, Acts 14.4. 4. But the people of the town were divided in their opinion about them. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. See, there's that division. It comes with the territory. You're going to have some people for and some people against. And the mixture, who knows? You may be many for and few against, or many against and few for. Uh, and then you have to, I mean, there's their judgment. There are, there's... Uh, uh, judgments in such a situation where you're outnumbered, so to speak, yeah. and it doesn't look like things are going to change. Yeah. Uh, well, God gave us that freedom, yeah. or else it wouldn't be love. It wouldn't be, you know what I mean? Right. He gave us um, to make a choice. 
He gave us that freedom right. to accept the grace or not. That's why, like, with grace, I always, like, we, we read it in the last, um, just, just back there. But, uh, you know, grace is a gift. Right. It's a free gift. Yeah. If, if, if someone gives you a Mercedes Benz and you say, well, let me give you a, a hundred, all I got is a hundred bucks. Even a dollar is too much. It <laughs> makes it not a gift, just a good deal. Yeah. yeah. So grace is a gift. Amen. That's right. Uh, okay, so some sided with the Jews, some with the apostles. Then a mob of Gentiles and Jews. And these apparently are unbelievers. Yeah. Unbelieving Gentiles, unbelieving Jews. Yeah. Along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them. We see this with Paul. Yeah. But he was on the other side. <laughs> yeah. So... You know, I'm sure he understands what's going on here, um, and and he knows, you know, what as far as the mob, he was part of it. Right. Yes. Until God converted him. Right. And when the apostles learned of it, they fled the region. See, they, you know, you got to know when you're in a situation, yeah. especially when you're dealing with a mob. Yeah. A mob has a mentality of its own, and it's yeah. never good. Yeah. This is the thing, that uh, if you've got a, a bunch of people get together, for instance, at the crucifixion of Jesus, yeah. when the people together started chanting, and they were they were probably a paid mob, yeah, probably, you know, funded. But there was someone starting it. It was the religious leaders that yeah. got them going. Right. But Cheerleaders. You, sure. But that mob is like yet another dimension of spirit that you've got to deal with. And when you've got that going the other way, you got to make you got to make some careful decisions about whether you're going to face up to this. You may not be able to, as in the case of um, St uh, Stephen, right? Yeah. They wound up stoning him. Yeah. Uh, but it's that same thing where the uh, Sanhedrin literally turned into a mob. Yeah. Well, Paul, that's what I was saying. Paul yeah. was on the other. The last stoning we seen was. <laughs> What, it was Stephen, and Paul was on the other side. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And we got a very interesting uh, follow-up to this, uh, the stoning of Paul where he was left to dead for dead. Yeah. That's coming up. And then what happened because of that stoning comes up in 2 Corinthians. I've got that queued up. I hope we might get to it today. We're already at 8.19, but we're going to go several more minutes here. Um, and they preached the good news. Okay, oh, yeah. sorry, let me back up here. Yeah, a mob of Gentiles decided to stone them. When the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Lyconia, to the towns of Lystra and Derby and the surrounding area. And there they preached the good news. And again, that... It allowed the, the these, message to go forth. Yeah. And it's just it. Oop, here we go. So here they are uh, in Iconium. So when the, the mob got to be too much there, they went on to Lystra and Derby, and that's the end of the outbound portion of Paul's missionary first missionary journey. Then they turn around and go back and backtrack at these places. Yeah. And that's what we're looking at now coming up, okay? So Paul and Barnabas at Lystra and Derby, the end of their mission. Yeah. The far end of their mission, not the, old, the, not the finishing end. Yeah. Okay. They're coming back. Right. Acts... 14.8. While they were at Lystra, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth. Now this is important to those looking on. If, if, you're, if you have a birth defect, something that you were born with, uh, the Jews, and it, there's a healing that takes place. The Jews interpret that to mean uh, that's, a, that's an indication that the, that's the Messiah's work. Okay? So he had been born that way and had never walked. You can imagine. He was sitting and listening to as Paul preached. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, Stand up! This is all he said. He looked at the guy. He could see the man had faith. He says, Stand up! And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. Wow. Now this is before people who knew this man from birth he had never been able to walk. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their local dialect, 
These men are gods in human form. This is Paul and Silas and his crew. <laughs> These men are gods. They decided that Barnabas was the Greek god Zeus. That's, the, that's their father god, also known as Jupiter in the Roman tradition. And Paul was Hermes, also known as Mercury yeah, in the Roman tradition. Uh, the messenger god. Okay, so Paul, they interpreted, because he was giving the message as being Hermes, and, and, and uh, Barnabas, I guess he was... Um, Zeus. He was, yeah, Zeus, but I guess he was a fairly tall man and of strong stature, and that's why they associated him with, with Zeus. Since he was, uh, so Paul, yeah, because he was the chief speaker, was associated with Hermes or Mercury. Yeah. Uh, now, the temple of Zeus was located just outside the town. So the priests of the temple and the crowd brought bulls and wreaths and flowers to the town gates, and they prepared to offer sacrifices to the apostles. <laughs> but when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard what was happening, they tore their clothing in dismay and ran out among the people, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We're merely human beings just like you. We've come to bring you the good news that you should turn from these worthless things namely the temple and the statues yeah. and the uh, idols and so forth, and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. In the past, he, God Almighty, permitted all nations to go their own ways, but he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. For instance, he sends you rain and good crops and gives you food and joyful hearts. But even with these words, Paul and Barnabas could scarcely restrain the people from sacrificing to them. <laughs> they had their hands full trying to yeah. calm them down. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I guess we can continue on. Then some of the yeah, Jews... It's to the end here. Okay, well, yeah, let's just kind of round out this story. Yeah. Then, then some of the Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the town. There it is. Yeah. Thinking he was dead. Okay. But as believers gathered around him, he got up and went back into town. The hmm. next day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. Why would right. you go back into town? They <laughs> yes, you don't imagine. <laughs> That's <Listen>. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Death by stoning is not a pleasant thing. And to go back, though. I yeah. Mean, it's just Right. But this is the thing. Over here in 2 Corinthians, so if you want to look ahead, you might want to take a look at this. Um, in 2 Corinthians, uh, where do we go? Uh, ver, uh, 12. Chapter 12, yeah, verse 2. Okay. The boast of doing good, but I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelations of the Lord. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Hmm. Whether I was in my body or out, I don't know. God alone knows. Yet, only God knows whether I was in my body or out. Like an out-of-body experience. Yeah. This, we, uh, people believe, is what happened when he was stoned. He really died. He really had a near-death experience. He doesn't know. He can't tell if he was alive or dead. But I do know that when I was caught up to paradise and heard these things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, things no human is allowed to tell. So that was the effect of being stoned and left for dead uh, that we read about here in Acts 14. We'll go over this tomorrow. We'll pick up here in 19 tomorrow. Amen. Right? Is that good Amen. enough? Amen, yeah. That's a good place to break. Okay. So we're at um, 21 tomorrow, 14. We got to a little bit. Yeah, we might just backtrack on this yeah. wonderful story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it is fascinating. Yeah. There are other passages we can look at in uh, 2 Corinthians yeah. and in Galatians. It, it was good to go through the, the story of where we uh, went yeah. through. So, yeah. Right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this for this day. Thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to meet together in your word, study together as, as your believers, and uh, to equip to get equipped, hopefully, for a stronger work, a better walk, a walk that more, is more pleasing to you. And we pray, too, again, Lord, we ask for your, your consideration, your special consideration for Pastor Matt in his hour of need. And uh, we... we Firmly commit him into your hands. You know best what is to happen. Uh, in the ultimate, we know in the end, all things work together for good for Amen. those who love God and are, calling, are called according to his purposes, Amen. as it says in Romans 8. 
Thank you, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yeah, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day and for all that we receive, Lord God, from you. We pray that this message goes out not to bring us glory, but to bring you glory, Lord God. We, we, we pray that you help us, Lord God, and enable us, Lord God. Teach us through your Holy Spirit how to work all these electronic things, Lord, that your word would go forward. We pray for Pastor Matt. We, I can't even count the souls that he's touched during the many years I've known him, Lord God. He's encouraged us to be here on a daily basis. Without him, this would not be, Lord. That's right. And we thank you for him. Please bring healing to him, comfort to Kathy and the family, and we'll be with them this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank Blessings, you all. everybody. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out. Oops, sorry.